Hello and welcome to Skander Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Instagram at Skander. I'm Skander Knits on Ravelry and I have a Ravelry pattern shop where I make knitting patterns mostly like kind of Norwegian inspired but sometimes just like anything. Uh, <laughs> I have knitting patterns. That, that's what I do for a living. Hey. Um, two returning viewers. The windows and the doors are wide open today. It is spring, it has sprung, it will be loud. I will try to cope. Two new viewers. <laughs> this, this is where I sit and talk about knitting. Mostly weekly, sometimes monthly. These times more monthly than not. And I get very easily distracted by noises, by sounds. And I will be distracted by having all these open doors and windows. But it's quite warm, so I am going to do that. Yes. I have exactly three knitting related things to talk about today and uh, got my finger on a Pepsi can so this is also going to be a feature today but you know that's, that's what we do here. Um, yeah so I have exactly one finished object and one work in progress unless I forgot something in which case whoopsie. <laughs> I also have an acquisition which <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get there but yeah my finished object, finally, the Azor pullover. And that's a loud airplane. I will stay strong. I will stay strong. <laughs> but yes, the Azor pullover by Orlan Such uh, in Pickles, Pure Wools. Pickles is a Norwegian yarn company. They don't have Norwegian wool, um, but they, you know, have their own shop in Oslo. I really like them. And I've always wanted to knit something with their pure wool yarn on its own. I did once knit with it, holding silk mohair together with it. So uh, I didn't really quite get the, the sole pure wool experience, but finally I have, and it is a really lovely yarn on kind of the a perfect fingering weight, not neither sport nor light fingering weight leaning. I'd say, I think it's worsted spun, so it's quite like straight hairs. It's not very fuzzy or airy, but still kind of fuzzy and hairy for something that to me looks maybe it is woolen spun it is a bit hairy I, I don't know i have been wrong about this before sometimes when something has more than two plies i tend to think it's worse than spun even if it is woolen spun and this is quite possibly uh consisting of three very thin plies that is woolen spun quite possibly uh so don't quote me on that but it is quite a smooth yarn so it's a little bit less rustic for a yarn that could arguably be maybe be said to be rustic I'm gonna say that's probably the case. I'm gonna pro say that probably woolen spun three plies. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get information about whether something's woolen or worse than spun sometimes, I find. I just have to make a best guess. Uh, but yeah, that's my my gushing about the yarn. It will definitely not be the last time. I do have some other pure wool yarns in my stash. I got a lovely green, there's like terracotta, and I got a like off-white and light grey. I mean I did use the light grey with the purple here. And I do have enough purple to do another jumper, so that'll be <laughs> the third jumper I will do in this very big sweater quantity. Oh yeah, I live by a train line, so that that's probably gonna feature. Ah, yes, uh, city life, what can I say? So that's, there's that long sleeve and everything. So you may be wondering, why am I not wearing it today? And if it's so lovely, and it's, it is, it is truly lovely. Um, but it's warm. Did I mention that it's warm? It's warm. Uh, I am finding it quite hard to cool down this apartment, even though I can get a nice little breeze through from the kitchen to the living room. It is exactly 21.3 degrees inside, which is the exact same that weather forecast are saying that it is in the outside. So. Uh, yes, I shan't be wearing knitwear today, but I will show you and hopefully you can pretend that I am wearing it. Yes. Uh, modifications. Let's see if I remember it. I usually tend to kind of wing it when it comes to sleeves and body. I just go with the row gauge that I have with the body and use that to calculate the decrease rate for the sleeves. And I did that so that I could have the length that I want and have it decrease, you know, to the row gauge that I have. So I can just count like, oh yeah, every sixth row, say, uh, I do that. So <laughs> basically after I did the yoga, I wasn't really reading the pattern and that's just, that's what I do. That's, that's just me. I did modify some of the yoga, but not a whole lot of it. So the only thing I think I did modify was where this shorter shaping at the bottom, which I think is always a lovely little touch. There was something about the distribution of increases and short rows where I think there were some remaining short rows for my size that didn't have increases or the other way around where I decided to do both. Uh, so I both had as many short rows and as many increases 
as I want it. It's like a raggedy increase under here. Would be lovely if I made notes to remember that, but <laughs> you know, I basically, I believe I started with this sort of yoke size that is a little bit smaller than the size for the body because I wanted a lot of ease, but I also wanted the yoke to just fit well without too much fabric going on around here. So that's, that was the decision there. Um, yeah. I think, anything else? I think the short dress for the neck, I followed to a T. No issues there. Uh, I did not do the cast on knit, knit short rows and the collar work. Rather, I cast on and knit the rib and then carried on. So I increased after the rib to the stockinette. Whereas the pattern initially has you cast on and then pick up for the neckline later, where you pick up at a lower rate, uh, which is fine. And that will give it more structure than I what I did. So I just didn't want to do that because I like my cast on better than I like my bind off. That's, that's my only reason for that. <sighs> kind of like very hyper conscious of how I look today. <laughs> Side note, I have a very, 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 very red face. I have yet to see my skin color on my face for the better of a decade, if not a decade and a half. Uh, I don't know why. I used to in my 20s be the one kind of like, I literally just wash my face with makeup wipes and shower gel and that may have messed some things up and I have been very into skincare for the past three years and it has done nothing for me even though i'm very gentle i don't over cleanse that was a very loud train <laughs> but i have lately found a moisturizer with both spf sun protection and a green tint and i'm like i look a little bit shiny but i'm not like bright red so i don't want to really show <laughs> how red i look without but i did record a video called how to find vintage knitting patterns a couple of years ago where I didn't wear anything on my skin because I just wanted to give my skin a bit of rest. I got some comments back then that I looked like I was wearing too much rouge and I was like no that ain't rouge. <laughs> so I'm both like very very self-conscious but I was like really pleased that this is like the most red I'm looking with this cream that is giving me some protection and moisturizing. I'm like it's everything I want. It's three in one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> uh, yeah, not sponsored just a fan. That was a very lucky find and I might actually be able to survive summer without a layer of primer and powder just to look like this color is actually in my face. That was a side note, but there isn't a whole lot of knitting to talk about today. Oh, oh dear. The lipstick's back. Needed to feel a little bit fabulous today, so we did that. Uh, <laughs> And I'm also like very self-conscious about like my accent. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm from Norway. <laughs> yeah, we already know that. Um, I am born and bred, lived there till I was 21 and then I moved to London. And ever since I moved to London, from 2011 till today, I've been told Irish, yet never having set foot in Ireland. Although I did go to Dublin a couple of years ago now, so I guess I've been now. But uh, no, it's just that if you are Scandinavian, you grew up in Scandinavia. You watch a lot of American television and films. There's gonna be music. A lot of people that kind of change their accent to be more American in songs. I don't know what the deal is with that. Native English speakers, that, that was on you. I don't really know what the deal is there. But that's the thing. So you get exposed to just a lot of American accents. So most of the time, if you talk to say Norwegians in English, they will have just the most fluent American accent if they are fluent English speakers. Uh, uh, that's just where people's accents are leaning because that's the most influence they've had though we do have a lot of British television as well it's just that's the major influence so that's why uh, whereas I have lived here for what 13 years almost give or take and so I have had more of a British influence as of late but if you mix up the early American influence with the later British influence you get something that kind of maybe sounds Irish if you don't know anything about Irish <laughs> It's basically just a British accent with a tinge of Norwegian, but a very American enunciation. And uh, it's starting to grind, no offense to the Irish, but it's just starting to grind on me a little bit, just how often this happens now. Uh, it's like, am I becoming more Irish sounding than I was a few years ago? Concerning. Maybe I should just like say all my t's and like or d's or r's or whatever in like such a high pitch that you can't hear them do i sound english is that is that 
But yes, Azure, 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 Azure. I love this pattern, I love this yoke, I love the color combination that I chose, even though I did desperately want it in blue when I initially saw uh, Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel had knitted this. I was like, I want that color. And then now I'm like, I love this color so much. It is so me. I obviously haven't woven in the ends because hello, have we met? <laughs> so um, that will happen soon now that this has been blocked and dried, which it has. I. I think I have changed. I used to be someone who woven men's before blocking and now I do it after, which could be argued to be sensible because then you block, you're weaving in the ends into the blocked form, which so it, the, the woven ends doesn't like pull and prevent blocking in that area. Uh, I think for me, it's just procrastination, uh, which who's shocked, not me. So yeah, ta-da, she's finished, she's done, it's fabulous. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, words. I wish I'm, I'm probably gonna think of stuff to say after this, but uh, for now, she good, she done. And that <laughs> I don't know what's possessed me today. I'm actually not, I wasn't in a very good mood until I started this. I was kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> me in my life. And then now I'm talking about knitting, so I'm good. I have a work in progress, which is very exciting. Uh, this came about because this is gonna be a very long story to get to where I was at, but. Uh, the lovely YouTube channel Breathing Yarn made a really interesting video about the ethics of yarn, the sustainability of yarn, which has led me down into a rabbit hole of epic proportions. So there will be a video about the sustainability of Norwegian wool, which the answers may surprise you. Uh, I could just leave it into one phrase, which is sort of what it all boils down to, but I have made a note sheet of over 4,000 words and you will hear all of them <laughs> once. I have actually structured it into a proper, I don't know, like video essay, I suppose. That is a helicopter. Apparently I live pretty close to a helicopter kind of venue. Like I, I was just walking to the river, the, the, the river, you know, Thames. Uh, and it was like this helicopter there that was like flying so close to the houses by the river. Like it was like an irritating house fly. Like, hello, just looking through your windows. I'm like, you can't fly that close to people's houses. Are you mad? So. Apparently there's like a helicopter hangar or something there, so. But yeah, I fell down a rabbit hole of Norwegian wool, hence why I am knitting with Norwegian wool. But not only that, because the this rabbit hole led to another rabbit hole, which is um, the history of the Marius jumper, which I've said I was going to make a video about for the past like four or five years. And it's actually finally happening and I have an equally beefy note sheet about that. So that would be exciting. But the combination here, the two things that I melded together is that the yarn that I wanted to use and the pattern I felt like knitting from, they all kind of, you gotta see how this connects. Here it is, I found it, it's all good, we're good. So I'm on my third bowl of yarn. This is Grå Trøndersø. I'm gonna read the label. Uh, this is from Ytter Duesgar Gård. <laughs> The autofocus is not in the room with us today, but this is the best that I can do. So this is them. I found this yarn, I think it was at the Christmas market in my hometown. So you have a lovely kind of market there in the town square. And that was when I came across this lovely, lovely, lovely yarn. I've already knitted with it before, though I'm not sure how much I got to talk about it on here because I was knitting trousers for my nephew. So I was knitting it there, I gave it to him when I was there. So I don't know if we ever actually saw those on the podcast. But he got to wear them for a number of years, so that's really, really good. So this is amazing, 100% wool from Jumping Happy Grey Thunder Sheep Lambs uh, from the Ytter Duesgård Gård, so Gård is farm. So these are a near extinct sheep breed in Norway that is just fascinating because most of the time you can split Norwegian sheep breed into one or two camps. It's a long tail camp and it's a short tail camp. So the long tail ones we call crossbreed, crossbred usually is what they say. And they are sort of often referred to as just the Norwegian white sheep. So when I'm raving about Finulgan or Hillesborg Us or their lamb's wool, it's always the Norwegian white sheep, but it's a relatively new breed in Norway. It's bigger, it's meatier, and yeah, has a lot of white wool. So it's very usable you don't have to bleach it down to dye it great stuff but in this category of crossbred you get this breed that has like nothing to do with these guys 
and that is this one because the story is most likely that this breed was bred by the monks in the monastery outside my hometown so like in the fjord is like a tiny little island that you can see where there's a monastery i think there are nuns there today but like way way back like I think like medieval times back, like we're really going far back. There were monks that have bred this and there is some merino-ish in this sheep, which is also very fascinating because merinos, it's like Spanish. They haven't like usually made the trip back up to Norway and people like speculated like, well, how do they even get there? And chances are probably via the UK, like most sheep breeds got to Norway, but like from the Romans. So the Romans been bringing merino to the UK, to Norway and it's sort of like, some of that is in this breed. This is why this yarn is quite soft, quite hairy. Um, there is some flyaway hair, but it's still a lovely, lovely, lovely quality. I wish you could all feel this because whenever I look at this, I'm like, oh, it's probably a bit prickly. And then it just isn't. It's just really, really lovely. Um, it's all natural colors as well. So none of these are dyed. They're just how they come off from the sheep because the sheep has different coloring in different parts of the fleece. And uh, so I've been knitting with two different colors. And I've been doing some color work. Uh, before I show you that, actually, I want to talk about the pattern as well. So this yarn, I would, I have a very hard time placing, <laughs> I'm gonna get to the pattern. I have a very hard time placing it weight-wise because when I was knitting the trousers to my nephew, I found that it was, first, it was running very thick and thin, the spinning, which is fine. That's kind of what you get from like a small farm yarn and I'm nauseous with that. Uh, but that makes it hard to look at it and get a sense of the weight. Also, I found the meters for each skein a little bit inconsistent. So I was having plenty for one leg, if not enough for the other leg. And so I initially wanted to design something with this lovely, lovely yarn, but not being able to fully be confident about how many meters per, per ball, I chose not to, because that would have been a nightmare to know. So here it says 100 grams, about 200 meters. So to me, that would place it in a worsted weight. And that is why I chose it for this pattern, because this is not a Marius. What? 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 Um, so <laughs> I'm going to try not to give a spoiler from my Marius video. Basically, when the Marius came out, it was kind of the culture in Norwegian yarn companies to produce patterns that they thought were just going to sell the yarn because that's where they make patterns. And so if another company has a pattern that's selling the yarn is super, super popular, they wanted to have a pattern that looks like that. So we just kept going around in circles like that. And I do say circles because <laughs> there's like a big controversy where the designer of this pattern that came out after the Marius was perhaps actually earlier than the Marius for like reasons we'll get into if I ever get around to this video. And it's, I don't have a set opinion about like who was first, but this was published second, so I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. <laughs> and so this is, I don't know what people actually call this. It is a version of the Cortina, which is the pattern that Dala Yarn is selling to this date, I believe. It's not very long ago since they sent me a whole booklet of just Cortina jumpers. So that was like theirs. Well, Sunness Yarn had the Marius, but back in the 50s, they did a yoked version, which looks a lot like Marius. And I think is really, really lovely. They call it the Fasan model, but I think that's just because they use the Fasan yarn, this pheasant, uh, but that yarn doesn't exist anymore. And it was a kind of worsted weight-ish yarn. So that's why I'm feeling very happy using that yarn because this yarn was sort of worsted leaning on DK and this yarn is worsted leaning on DK. So very happy with that. I also, I'll show you the photo now so you can see. And yeah, they came out in these little booklets. I just printed it as, as they came out. So they came like this, you have the, abbreviations explained in the back and here you get the pattern and I can show you that because these are like perfectly available online and what have you so yeah that's that's that but I was looking at this I was like I do not have yarn to do these colors I have yarn to maybe do the reverse colors but I wanted this to look as much as the photo so what I found is actually I can inverse the colors just in this section but keep it the same here but also probably not do the turtleneck so i'll keep that light as well so i've sort of inverted some parts but not the others so the body will be dark sleeves will be dark the zigzag will be inverted but everything else will be the same as the photo except the neckline i will keep that short and the light color so you, lo you looked at this you've seen it i will be talking a lot about the pattern after this because <laughs> as you can imagine modifications were needed i have wanted to do this for such a long time this is very exciting for me <laughs> 
this is what we have right now. It is on the needles, that's why it's looking a little bit squashed together. I could have had the foresight of making this episode when this was still on a provisional cast on, because that's how I did it. I provisionally cast on the yoke, knitted it up, and finished with a neckline. But some notes here. Um, this pattern doesn't really give you a lot of sizes, nor does it even give you much size info. This is what it says about sizes. Sizes. 40, 42, 44. So this is referring to European clothing sizes of the time, that's what we use in Norway. Uh, so 40, 42, 44 is a pretty nice size range. You get a kind of spacious jumpers if you are size small, medium, maybe large. Uh, it's not really a very good size range. And for me who wants something quite positive ease, the biggest size would be a little bit clingy, especially because it's quite thick yarn. I think it wouldn't give me much ease. So it would fit, but is that, you know, I look, she gets all this ease. I, I want, I want ease. I want, I want lots of fabric. So well, I could have made the larger size. I was like, mm, I think we're going to add a little, add a little fabric here. So those were my two main challenges. One is short row shaping because I cannot stand yokes that are the same front and back that they don't make me happy they start digging up here and riding down the back because we are different front and back and sometimes we need to take that into account when we knit. Uh, the other challenge was how do I do this yoke which is the exact same for all three sizes but make it a little bit bigger after the yoke. So I decided well you know what if this yoke is good enough for sizes 40, 42 and 44 <laughs> then surely I can have that too. The only thing I need to focus on is getting more stitches after the yoke so that I can have a slightly bigger body. Now, one very good news thing about <laughs> my English just like left the building. There's a lot of ease in the body. So okay, I'm gonna show you the, the picture here. You see how much ease she's got in the sleeves here? So I just said body, I meant the sleeves. It's a lot of ease here. I don't need sleeves that big. The sleeves for my size, I think we're like 45 centimeters around. I think I measure 35 no more than 40 so i was like 40 is gonna give plenty of ease here i do i don't think i want to risk running out of yarn for something more than 40 around the sleeve especially if i'm gonna knit it straight for quite a bit before i shape that will be a pretty good amount of ease so i can actually get five centimeters from each of the sleeves and put it into the body so i did that another thing that i did is i decided to cast on an extra four stitches under the arm that might be a bit excessive because that means there's 20 stitches under each underarm as opposed to 16 that was recommended and i'm seeing that here that that is it's a lot it you know it's fine i think but that meant that i could take another uh four stitches out of each sleeve and put onto the body because they will be added in later anyway so that's kind of how i added most of the e the these into the body i took some from the sleeves and i yeah <laughs> so and I cast on more stitches under the arms. Another thing that I'm doing is there is a little bit of increases after between the color work and the underarms for the yoke. Uh, so at the bottom of the yoke, you're about, I think there's like an eight stitch difference for the biggest size. Oh, that's a lovely butterfly. Oh. But yeah, so I decided, well, eight, that's, that you can do that as a raglan. And I think that will look a lot better than suddenly like, whoop, extra stitches. You can actually align them here. So. I decided if I'm going to do a raglan, I'll do another round of raglan. So I did another round as well. So you get another eight stitches. So all together, I think I'm going to be quite happy with the fit. So that's how I solved that. So you see there's like a tiny little invisible raglan happening in under. You can't see it. I, I can barely see it. So that's that's how I solved that. So I think it will have a nice fit for the shoulders and then just enough ease for the body without me running out of yarn. I won't be able to get more of, fingers crossed then comes the challenge of the short rows and I'm still not sure how satisfied I am with that because first I just wanted to put them up at the top because <laughs> it's just less less short row shaping less purling for me uh, but I did that and then the neckline just stood right up like you can imagine it was almost like this because there was just so much fabric between the rib and the color work yeah. and so I did it again but now I went down a needle size so another needle size and the normal needle size I go down between color work and stocking it and I did just a little bit of short row. So you get the tiniest amount back here. You can see there's just a little bit here that is not in the front. So it's probably not that effective, but that was the only way that this was gonna look nice. And I had to put the remainder at the bottom of the yoke. Another problem is that this barely goes over my head as it is right now. So I think I will undo this bind off, continue knitting the rib and actually just sew it to the inside. So sew live stitches to the inside, I think 
that will make it a little bit easier to get over my head it will look cute yeah because now it's a little bit snug uh, that is because i did take out a couple of stitches between the color work and the neckline which the pattern doesn't call for but i know from other patterns i am very happy with the 45 centimeter neckline at the smallest this was initially meant to be 51 but it might be a little bit tight in my particular bind off style so i'm gonna have to rethink that redo the the bind off but i put the remainder of the short rows here hence why you'll see there's a lot of fabric at the back slightly less for the front i am very nervous about how i did this because to get a kind of extreme effect i decided to go back and forth over the the arm portion of the yoke so you'll see that it gets quite low on this side of the upper arm and it gets quite long on this side of the upper arm. I hope that will work out. Usually I will do it between here and here and between here and here so that it's the same here and the back of the head. I don't know if this is making sense. That's what I'm comfortable doing. Here I didn't do that because I was like, I think I don't want the yoke to be any longer than it is, but it needs to be longer just so I can do this. So to avoid adding more length to the front so that we can raise the back, I really hope this is gonna work out but that's the fun thing about doing these types of knits is like there's just no commitment this is just all for fancies so if I make a mistake I'm learning from that mistake and I won't be putting that mistake in any of my patterns so that's kind of some of the it, this is why I always recommend designers to keep knitting other people's stuff you're just gonna learn so much you're just gonna be challenging yourself and trying out things that you don't want to risk to trying out in your own designs because they have maybe deadlines or some kind of thing it's just good to kind of stay fresh you know knitting wise and that's why i'm knitting a pattern from 1950 something <laughs> i hear the irony <laughs> yeah so that's that's basically where it's at right now i'm just gonna knit this body straight down until i have run out of the skein probably and then i'm gonna finish the sleeves which i'm probably gonna do a pretty typical for me fashion just knit them straight to here start decreasing to about here maybe decrease a little bit around the cuff just to have a cuff words we'll, we'll see what, what how much yarn i have first of all <laughs> But I'm not like a three quarters length sleeve kind of gal, so we're probably gonna get full length there. But yeah, uh, very, very happy with this otherwise. Uh, it's been giving me a challenge. I think in hindsight, I probably should have just added a, another chart repeat in the pattern because fair enough, they decided to just do one yoke fits all. So all three sizes have the same yoke. There's just some stitch count adjustment here. I maybe should have just engineered a bigger yoke, but then I might as well be writing the pattern myself. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you live and learn. Uh, if it doesn't fit me, it'll fit someone else, but I'm, I'm having fun with it. And it's just been so much fun to have a jumper that's both on theme for the yarn video, but also on theme for the Marius video, even though this is not a Marius. Uh, you'll become expert in this in no time, just you wait. And that concludes my work in progress. And that leads me to acquisitions. Now I know in the last episode I was reflecting around purchasing more yarn than we need, you know. Stashes, are they good? Hmm, scholars remain divided. Uh, <laughs> no, they don't, they all say use what you have. Uh, <laughs> but I, I wanna be very clear that I, when I was talking about stashes, I wasn't making a judgment. I was certainly not making a moral judgment on stashing i don't have a it is good or it is bad opinion on it and i appreciate if that does not get projected onto me because i see the merits in both uh depending on you know whether you're going to use it that's the all, always what it comes down to are you going to use it is someone going to use it will it be used that is the point of yarn right so yeah i was talking about how i i stash less than i used to do i am less focused on stashing I buy stuff for the project that I make and when I go to shows I feel less inclined to buy than I used to do. But that was yarn and this is technically not yarn and this is roving. <laughs> Look at this fluff cloud. Look at this. So I got two of the white and two of the charcoal and they are so soft. Oh my god. Oh. These come in two unplied, sorry, unspun and arguably unplied strands together so this is what this is what we're dealing why we're whispering i don't know but like it's so fragile you kind of have to whisper you know what i mean so i uh 
I hate ASMR, I can't stand it. People whisper, I get angry, like uncontrollably so. <laughs> okay, now I'm making everyone scared of me. But yeah, I, oh, I have wanted to buy this floof for so long. So this is something Hillis Vogue started making a while back and I saw it at the factory and I was like, I will buy this when I need it. I will, I won't, not yet. And arguably it's, that time has maybe not yet come. But the thing is, Knit With Attitude here in London have started selling this because they get some Hillisburg yarn and then they were, were sold out for a bit. And that's when the scarcity started to affect me. And I was like, hey, when you get this back, I will buy it. And I did. Um, so I have, I got two of each. I don't know if that will be enough to make whatever I will end up making because I think I want to make something quite oversized and color work and you know, like this babe here. Where is she? My cyber coat, which is always here. It's just so nice and big and light and just me. And I wondered if I could do something even more light and fluffy with this because I mean, when it's not spun, it's just fluff. There's, it, it's just so much lighter. What you can knit with it can be so much lighter, uh, but it's still arguably maybe like worsted weight, possibly even iron weight, but if this had been spun, we'd be in fingering weight. So like that is the extreme here, maybe like sport weight, I don't know. It's kind of hard to estimate, but I'm just saying like, just for not being spun, we have doubled the thickness. So imagine you can make something to the thickness of worsted iron, with the weight of sport fingering. I mean, I just, sign me up. So I, uh, it's so nice, but I need to, now that it's getting warmer, safely wrap this away it's just sitting out here in this paper bag we've got two of each of these and i'm just just so excited about it i it's actually ridiculous just how i'm like inhaling what is essentially smells like a barn <laughs> well, uh, you know the things that make me happy that's been all of my acquisitions life stuff i've already talked about the lovely lovely weather and uh I think I'm happy with the skin situation. I think the this moisturizer, I'm definitely, oh my God, I'm so happy. I would rather be, <laughs> I'm just gonna go on and on about that. I finally don't have to wear makeup on my face. I can just have it on my eyes, it's great. I mean, yeah, lipstick, optional, but ah, wonderful. And now that it's finally like getting warmed up, I will definitely take the opportunity before it gets too hot, London style, and start to work on my garden because I have all this lovely patio furniture that definitely needs restaining. And even one of the planks is looking a bit green, so I'm a bit worried. I don't want it to rot, because I spent a lot of money on that from Ikea, but it turns out their staining does not stay on through just the mildest of humid weather. Gotta work a bit on that. But the plants are coming back, the leaves are coming back. It, took, it didn't even take a week for the massive tree across the road to just be fully covered in leaves, so this is amazing. Uh, I'm really feeling it. I, bit nervous how hot it's gonna be in here come proper proper summer because even today has been a smidge of a challenge and I do worry about being on the on the ground floor when it comes to ground floor creatures that I never had to worry about being up on the what was I third or fourth floor back in the day I've been painting as well all my days uh, I've been painting my living room uh, and I had to laugh at it because I've been making fun of the light yellow walls in my previous place for so long. I was just like, oh, my landlords, they have no taste, blah, blah, blah. And then I pick a color. It's, it's not light yellow. It is what they what the kids call grayish. So it's a warm gray. But when I was painting, I was like, have I just, am I? So the existing colors here used to be gray, but they were so gray that they almost looked blue in a certain light. Whereas here, the same light it would just kind of come across a lot more neutral but a little bit warm and i really want this place to feel warm that's kind of my my aim it's been a workout that's i can definitely tell you that much but uh yes i think that's all i have to say my goodness was this a short episode have i actually been able to do this have i <gasps> this is my ideal length this is great okay well thank you all so 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 much for watching uh don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter subscribe to this channel if you like we seem to be going under and over 24,000 subscribers every now and then uh it's just to keep me on my toes and make me record more i suppose but yeah thank you so much for that and leave a comment if you feel like it or something i don't know that's what the kids are saying when they wrap up the videos isn't it so yes thanks for watching and i'll see you later Bye bye